Welcome to the shortwave radio channel. And uh, one of the things that is often overlooked in propagation, because we have, usually we have a flat map. When we look at a world map, it's, it's a flat map. You, you don't have the, you don't have the whole three dimension view of actually the earth. Um, and that's where a, a, um, a globe is actually a better indication if you buy one of those uh, because you will have a better view of, yeah, the, the Earth is round. Uh, here we have what is a, f a flat Earth society map. <laughs> and <laughs> this is actually um, interesting when you put it in another perspective. And I'm going to show you by double-clicking on the map. And here it gives you more of a, this is a round shape earth and where it's day night and nighttime and um, it's centered on my location here but you could see uh, you know Russia and Asia and this is Africa here and all of that and the reason I'm actually showing you this is to show you also that you know the poles the north and the south poles their areas where signal propagate they have interesting characteristics because the North Pole and the South Pole being the magnetic poles or close to them, uh, the disturbances and propagation are often higher. So just a little something on the sun can just make these signals change widely in a very fast way. Uh, actually, if you listen to signals on shortwave, you might have noticed that a signal that has a very fast flutter in it. You know, often you see an S meter, the, the, the needle of the S meter like, just like you know really go like crazy and you're listening to it and you're wondering wow why is it so fluttery usually it's because the signal is passing through or very close to the magnetic north pole and that is a characteristic that you'll see in propagation when that happens so you got to imagine that because the earth is round some stations actually use that property to make the path shorter from one end to the other. And one, two examples that we'll use here. Uh, KBS World Radio from South Korea will broadcast from South Korea. So South Korea is somewhere here and close to that. And of course, it's going to broadcast over the pole to North America. Why? Because it's simpler than making all the round to North America. And that is a trick that's used by many shortwave broadcasters. Uh, remember, a signal doesn't curve very well. A signal goes straight line. So what's going to happen is they're often going to look at what is the shortest path from here to where I want to be heard and uh, in a straight line. And many, many cases, it's over the poles. So KBS World Radio, uh, Radio Thailand on 13750. You might notice when it's strong, still has a very fluttery signal. Why? Because it's crossing the North Pole. They're pushing their signal towards the North Pole. It's shorter distance to us. And with the changing seasons, also what changes is that you've heard the stories about you know, the North Pole being in darkness for a certain amount of time. The South Pole also. Uh, depending if it's summer, it's in daylight, and winter, it's in the darkness. Well, that is something to use. Um, amateur radio operators might actually notice that in December in North America, there's very few 20-meter signals coming out of um, Europe, for example, at, at late at night. Uh, most of the time, there's none. There might be signals from the Americas, South America, um, maybe a little bit sometimes coming out of the Pacific area, but for the most part, you know, Australia uh, also, but for the most part, late at night, what you'll have is more localized in December. But you go in the 20 meter band, 14 megahertz, and you go there in June or July, and you get tons and tons of European amateur station. But you might be thinking, yeah, but. Late at night, let's put that back to the standard map. Late at night, 
the pad between North America and Europe is in darkness. How can 20 meters be so good? Well, the trick is, is that the 20 meter signals take the fact that in winter, in summer, the North Pole, the North Pole, which is somewhere here, is bathed in constant sunlight. That means the ionosphere on the North Pole in June, July, is constantly lit by the sun. It constantly is capable of having higher frequencies propagate. So if there's no geomagnetic storms or anything to, uh, or what could be even worse, a polar cap absorption event, which just wipes out signals on shortwave across the poles, uh, in quiet conditions, it's the best way to reach North America. It's short. It's also shorter. So European, and you'll often hear them, actually. You'll hear the European AMs. They're going to say, oh, beaming the North Pole to North America. And you might hear the same here in, in, in North America, hearing you know American stations um, or, or Canadian stations say, beaming through the North Pole for Europe. And... 20 meter band is open 24 hours pretty much in the summer, even in low solar activity. Uh, now it's even better because the higher solar activity really um, makes that even better. And actually, higher solar activity means that that same polar communication to Europe might even work up to, you know, 17 meters or or, or 15 meters. And you might have communications, you know, through the night on 15 meters because you're able to have your signal propagate through the North Pole. So it's, it's very, very interesting to see the types of propagation and understand that that day-night pattern um, works for you. Another thing is you might hear a lot of Asian signals in North America in summer, once again, uh, in high frequencies. Why? Because they can cross the North Pole to us. So any signal, even though not sent towards us might, if it's sent in the general direction for depending on the, the, the antenna's um, bearing, um, the signal might just make it through the North Pole and we hear it here. So you'll hear China on, you know, a uh, international broadcast, broadcast band like on, on 16 uh, meters. I remember last summer uh, hearing China's uh, CNR1 jammer and following it and hearing it as high as 22 megahertz um, because that was the highest frequency they wanted to jam and the conditions were good. It was summer, the North Pole was in sunlight, high solar activity, 22 megahertz was crossing late at night, like, you know, 3 UT maybe uh, here, uh, 04 UT uh, to North America uh, because of that characteristic of, you know, the North Pole being able to propagate signals in higher frequencies. So, you know, you've got to look at the Earth into a three-dimensional view because it's not flat, it's round, and shortwave propagation has this uh, way of propagating everywhere uh, by using different characteristics of, you know, the, uh, the propagation, where are you, and where it's the... Uh, simply the shortest path to send a signal to you. And it works like that. It's great for uh, helping us in the propagation and also seeing the different patterns, why such area is heard more at this time of year than others or on certain frequencies. Um, you know, it's the fun fact of propagation and all the knowledge that goes with it, you know, knowing when, where, why. Um, I think for a lot of people... It's much more the, why am I hearing it now, but why don't I hear it in January, or why? Well, it has to do, once again, with all of that change in the daylight pattern. And so day-night, uh, the shift in the North Pole, you know, starting, and you, you'll, you see it because you start seeing that when the North Pole is in the sunlight uh, in June, July, as we move on to August, in September, the sun's angle slowly drifts down because the uh, the uh, we're going slowly into fall and and winter, 
And at some point, there's that point where the sun is going to disappear from, uh, you know, the ionosphere on the North Pole. And you could see it because you could see that the transition from these stations changes and they'll maybe be less uh, interesting. Some signals are going to not be as strong on high frequencies as we drift towards uh, a time of, of fall or, or winter. Uh, all sorts of patterns that are interesting to you know, there's a full science behind this and and the funny interesting thing is not everything is still understood on radio propagation so you know we're part of the experiment basically if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thanks for watching